associated with that, but that inspection is not necessarily related to a particular set of expectations as to what should be provided. What HICO has done in recent years has been to uh, write down with more specificity what is provided. They haven't gone for the, I think, the mistake of these huge long lists that we use in the United States, uh, again, checklists. It's rather a mix of principle and, and detail. And the importance of principle is that it requires the nursing home providers then to work out themselves, with their staff, with their clientele, to work out what the principles require and deliver. And, you know, I go to nursing homes pretty regularly and you know immediately. You, you know it's, 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 a, it's a sort of blink moment. You know when you walk across the threshold whether you're in a well-run place or not because um, uh, the way things smell, the way, the, way, the way you're welcomed or not, the way you're treated, if you're treated like a family member rather than a, a strange visitor, um, the, the, the way that um, the whole setup, you know immediately. Uh, it's very hard to capture that in a set of detailed standards. So uh, in, in the nursing home case, it's been about putting a lot more structure around inspection and expectation of nursing homes without necessarily writing everything down. And the case, and take, take a second example of uh, uh, provision of utility services. Um, I, I'm a blowing, so didn't necessarily didn't necessarily remember uh, telephone services in the 1970s. Uh, but my understanding is that no one had any sense of entitlement around the installation of a phone line. Uh, they applied. Uh, we assumed there was corruption uh, around the provision of telephone service to some people. Um, others had to wait if you weren't. Um, in line for corrupt, ben to benefit from corruption, then you had to wait maybe 18 months, uh, two years to get a phone line. But you had no entitlement to, 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 to a phone line. Uh, whereas today, if your phone service is off the blink for a day or two, you're entitled to a conversation around it. Very specific service standards um, around uh, both uh, fixed line and, and mobile uh, uh, telephony. And of course also, which would be the thing, you know, the, the ideological component here might be to say, and furthermore, you've also got cho market choices, so you can exit uh, a service provider who's not meeting expectations, in addition to being able to enforce um, uh, detailed specification, which may then also be enforced by the regulator as well as an aspect of general service quality specified in, in licenses. Do you see any means at all in terms of institutional redesign of in shortening the feedback loops in order to um, uh, enhance service provision while enhancing um, what I would call one of the key things of, of a democracy, visibility of resources and outcomes. There's a tendency to use establishment regulatory agencies as a mechanism for, for blame shifting. And so saying, well, um, so the Minister of Communication says, well, the fact there's problems with broadband is not my problem, um, it's the regulator, you must you know, refer to the regulator. Now, it's interesting that in the case of water, the government's not been able to give away responsibility. I mean, the functions around water have been assigned to others, and um, they've, they've failed to give it away politically. They cannot get rid of it through assigning the regular responsibility to the, to the energy regulator, uh, nor to assigning the delivery responsibility to, 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 to Irish water. So in that sense, the feedback loops aren't as long as you might think, uh, but it would be, you know, water would probably have been a, a better story for government had they been able to make those uh, dis distinctions clearer. And as to institutional design, um, whether you, so the problem of co-locating the political responsibility with the delivery responsibility is the risk you have political interference uh, with decision making around uh, delivery choices. Um, that's a, 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 a worrying enough thing in a, in, a large, in a large state. In a small state with tight social networks, it does create an anxiety um, uh, that um, uh, 
uh, for example, and some work Jane Sutra has done has, has tended to demonstrate uh, very significant uh, resource allocation decisions being shaped by the uh, constituencies of the ministers um, in, in, in power. So it, it does raise a real anxiety, and if you, the separation of the delivery from the um, uh, 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 policy function, you like, then with independent oversight, um, uh, perhaps of, of, of both, does provide some assurance um, that you won't get um, what, what, what we might call illegitimate political decision making, as as opposed to legitimate political decision making. So, um, so there's something to be said for that separation, but then. Excessively long feedback loops, of course, can be a problem, and the worry about hiding the ball. Um, uh, I suspect that the answer is to bring your questions to any particular sector to engage in, in institutional design and be very clear about where responsibilities lie, not just for oversight and, and, and rulemakers, so but also for um, advocacy, for, for um, uh, promoting learning about, about the sector. And that's one which you might draw the NGOs in and give them a formal responsibility, as some EU instruments do. They give NGOs a formal responsibility to undertake, uh, for example, certain monitoring tasks or certain advocacy tasks. Um, so I think the right questions that can be answered in particular sectors only, rather than by reference to general principles. Seen from another perspective, you could say that, uh, taking Ireland as an example or other Western countries, there's been a deregulation. So financial sector, light touch regulation. So. I understand there's a lot of more regulatory agencies, but how uh, would that literature answer that? You know, saying that we have a lot of regulations, but in fact we seem to have lost control, let's say, over the financial sector or other healthcare or anything. The financial sector, um, a, a number of problems with the financial sector. I mean, there was, there was the one that all of the inquiries um, in, in, in the US, UK, Ireland said that failure to understand systemic risk, failure to understand the interconnectedness of the various complex transactions between between the banks, there was there was a sort of a mar and the market actors didn't understand the risks they faced um, uh, from that one set of issues. I mean, in Ireland, the Hannan report found that um, social networks were part of the problem. That um, uh, junior officials dealing with rules uh, and seeking to enforce the rules would find matters got referred off. Um, from banks to more senior officials within the central bank or within the financial regulator, and that the ambition of the more junior officials to enforce the rules was trumped by the socially driven motivations of those higher up who said, oh, no, well, um, we won't enjoy the golf so much next week uh, if, we, if we start enforcing the rules against, against the banks. You may recall when Matthew Elderfield stepped down um, as, as, uh, from a position as independent financial regulator, um, he told the Financial Times, he was asked, how did you manage this you know, transformation? Maybe too soon to tell, but a claim transformation in financial regulation. I said, well, I don't play golf with bankers. <laughs> you know, um, straightforward as that. Now, it's not as simple as that. Um, light touch, I think, in Ireland was not a design system. It was, in substantial part, a consequence of the environment of social networks impacting on a rule system that was not as bad as it's suggested to be. And you know, light touch regulation is one thing. If, if you say that's the same as principles based regulation, I would be inclined to reject that argument. You know, principles based regulation, as contrasted with light touch, involves not only challenging banks to devise appropriate norms to regulate their own conduct, it also involves very extensive verification monitoring of what they're doing and how they're doing it. And that's the bit that was missing from banking regulation in Ireland. There was lack of stringency around monitoring, around things for implications at the regulatory level, in addition to the uh, underlying um, lack of understanding, even amongst the market actors, of the uh, systemic risk that they, that they face. Uh, and Honohan admits in what he says that, uh, and there's wide analysis, that part of both those phenomena was an excessive dependence on the interests and motivations of the financial market actors. So there was a, 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 a political element in the sense of um, an interplay of interests in which one group of interests would in favor of another. And those three things together was a heavy mix. Um, but I think I'd separate them and tackle them separately rather than look at them as one.